Our Deep in Debt series continues now on In Business. Uh, we've been talking about the fiscal troubles being experienced by so many states throughout this country all year long, and many have been forced to take some deep, painful cuts and in some cases roll out tax hikes. But four states are actually in the black with a surplus. It's Montana, North Dakota, Alaska, and Arkansas, which is where we find our next guest this morning. Governor Mike Beebe joins us live from Little Rock. Uh, Governor, uh, welcome back to the show. Congratulations on uh, being able to say that uh, about being in the black here. But look, look forward for me, would you? Because when we look at the breakdown of stimulus dollars uh, under you know, American Reinvestment Act, that's what 40 billion less that will be going to states than went last year. Are you going to be able to stay in the black? How much of a hole will that create? Well, Margaret, we didn't use our stimulus dollars uh, except where we had no other choice because of uh, federal mandates. We didn't use them for uh, operations. We used them for capital projects. Uh, I looked at it as though stimulus dollars was one-time money and should be used for one-time projects, primarily construction, whether it's road construction, school construction, uh, renovation and maintenance of uh, state buildings or uh, public education buildings or college and university buildings. Uh, so we tried to use those uh, stimulus dollars in a fashion that when they ran out, uh, it wouldn't create a hole or a gap in our ongoing operations budget. And the, the couple of areas where we were uh, required to use it in that fashion, we actually took our regular money that would have flo uh, flowed to uh, maintenance and operations, such as in Medicaid, and put it in a trust fund uh, to try to uh, uh, make sure that we were still having the uh, regular amount of money going forward in the normal cash flow. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to ask you about some of those specific state programs, if I could, but, but first let's stay abroad here and, and talk about the implications potentially of some of the, the tax changes that may be coming. What does the extension of unemployment benefits uh, that may be coming under the Obama tax compromise mean for the people of your state? Well, certainly for those people who uh, are unemployed and who would run out of unemployment compensation benefits, it's, uh, uh, it's obviously good news for them. Uh, we, uh, we in Arkansas have been fortunate that our unemployment rate has been a couple of uh, points less uh, than the national average throughout the course of this economic downturn. Hopefully that will continue. Uh, but uh, for those people who had run out of benefits, it'll mean uh, that they'll still be able to provide essential uh, services for their families, uh, basic needs, food, uh, and shelter. Well, uh, one of the ways that states can often raise money to create projects within their state is going to the municipal debt markets and perhaps use this Build America bond program that came out under the stimulus plan. Are you disappointed that that will be ending, at least under the existing uh, tax compromise? Well, you know, one of the problems with any bond programs is you have to have a continuing source of revenue later on to be able to uh, to defray the cost of those bonds. So uh, I, I, uh, bonds are, are appropriate in some instances, but uh, you all, when, whenever we look at bond programs, we make sure there's a revenue stream uh, that's dedicated or that's contemplated to be able to defray the cost of those bonds. Consequently, uh, we're not in a posture or position that we've relied on that. We're joined once again by Arkansas Governor Mike Beebe, who's been talking to us about how he's managed to keep uh, his state's budget in the, the black. Governor, before the break, you were telling me you were not disappointed that the Build America bond program doesn't look to be surviving into the new year. Will you, in the, in the first quarter, be reassessing your finances and possibly uh, going into the municipal debt market? No, we, uh, we have no plans to do that at all. Uh, we have uh, structured our current budget as well as a proposed budget for next fiscal year and even a uh, preliminary one for the year following that in such a fashion that uh, uh, we are not dependent or reliant on uh, borrowing money going into the bond market, uh, uh, trying to finance things on, uh, on those type of measures. So uh, uh, it, it's not going to affect our budget in Arkansas. Well, I want to ask you about some of your, your state finances here because um, Arkansas is one of the 35 states that has an unemployment trust fund debt to the federal government. I believe your state has a bill of $330 million. That's correct. And you have to start repaying that January 1st. So are you looking at raising the business tax in your state to meet that need? I have asked uh, both business and labor to get together uh, and hopefully they will be able to do that uh, so that you'll see some uh, benefit reductions for a short term until that $330 million dollars is repaid uh, and some increase in business uh, taxes uh, to pay for that 
Both should be uh, temporary. Both should be merely for the time period necessary to be able to, to pay that $330 million back and then go back to uh, uh, the status quo prior to any changes. If those two sides cannot get together, uh, I'm not afraid or ashamed uh, to uh, make those decisions myself and then try to ensure that the legislature passes them. As you know, this is a federal program uh, that uh, uh, dictates uh, where that money goes and, and people that are unemployed are, are uh, eligible to those funds. And Arkansas has not borrowed any money since about March. Uh, and hopefully we won't have to borrow any money going forward, but that $330 million will have to be paid back. I mean, when you look at Arkansas, the two main businesses that come to my mind are Walmart and Tyson. I mean, two big conglomerates within your state. Uh, where do those two corporations stand in terms of uh, their approach to the possibility of a business tax? Well, I think uh, the business community has been uh, uh, very receptive. Uh, they, they understand and realize that uh, you've got to stay... Uh, You've got to stay afloat. You have to have balanced budgets in Arkansas. Most states, I think over 40 states, have a balanced budget requirement. We're not going to be able to go on forever and ever and, uh, and, and just uh, continue the, the policies that's gotten this country in trouble. So mm -hmm. they realize that we're going to have to uh, to pay the uh, the advances on the unemployment trust fund back to the federal government, just like virtually every other state's going to, and they're yeah. willing to do their part. Uh, you have uh, $200 million due in a year and a half when it comes to uh, covering those Medicaid costs. How are you going to do that? Well, uh, actually, it's probably worse than that. The two areas that I worry about going forward, even though we're okay for the next year or so, the two areas I worry about going forward are the uh, continued explosion in the prison population and what that does to our budget, and certainly uh, Medicaid, and not only what the federal uh, health care program has done to increase Medicaid costs, but just rising Medicaid costs altogether. We're going to have to change our methodology uh, and some fundamental changes in the way we deliver Medicaid, including uh, payments. Uh, the fee for service option that uh, has lasted forever and ever is probably not a sustainable model going forward. So uh, we're, we're looking at some pilot programs to try to uh, determine how we can uh, make payments in a different fashion, more of a DRG approach to things that has more stability to it and also contains costs. All right, Governor, um, quickly before I let you go, you said $200 million was an underestimate there. Uh, more precisely, Two what, what's the unfunded mandate? $200 million is what uh, the upper end of uh, the estimates were to Arkansas's Medicaid program from the federal health care uh, right. reform bill. Uh, without regard to that, we're looking at uh, probably a total, uh, counting that I say, of uh, $400 million wow. a year and a half from now in terms of anticipated Medicaid general revenue costs. Okay. Governor, thank you for coming back you on In Business. Good luck to you. You bet. Thank you.